Hey everyone, this is Nick from Mecca Warehouse, and today we're back with weekly update number 73. And uh, without further ado, let's just jump right into it. We'll kick this off with week in review, and this is where I talk about what's been going on this past week, things that are coming up, stuff like that. And uh, I guess the, the first thing is just, uh, this week feels like kind of recovery week. The last few weeks have been insane. Tons of shipments, tons of stuff coming in. We've had several, like, record days in a row or record weekends in a row record restocks i guess two top fives in two weeks means uh, a ton of meant a ton of check-in it means a ton of packing and it's just been kind of crazy and that kind of came right on the heels of my trip down to richmond so it's been like three weeks i guess of just insanity this week's been a little bit more sane we've got good stuff in for restocks not quite as much stuff and it's just been a little bit better and a chance to kind of catch our breath a little bit because I think our next multi pallet shipment arrives like later today, tomorrow, early next week. And so we're going to be right back into that crazy cycle again uh, very quickly, but it's been kind of good to consolidate a little bit our position here. Uh, some of that though has kind of driven some, some, I don't know, Continue need. I'm constantly talking about needing to expand the warehouse. I had a conversation yesterday with a, a commercial real estate guy about trying to find a spot. I know our, our landlord has potentially uh, some spaces that might be available and trying to figure out what that next space is. Uh, and a lot of that is we need more space for more shelves and to hold more inventory. Uh, but this weekend kind of reinforced that in the past few weeks really that we need the ability to set up a second packing station which we don't really have the space for because we're receiving so many orders when we have these really big weekends that used to be really rare and now we've had several in a row where i've either had to come in on saturday and do a little bit of packing or perhaps someone else come and help me do some packing trying to get uh, caught up so we don't bleed into tuesday too much and uh this weekend we couldn't even do that because of some weather we ended up not, I was going to come in on Saturday. We had a kind of a snow rain mix that I think was going to have some, some very poor driving conditions. I didn't go and find out, but I didn't end up coming in. And uh, as a result, uh, some of our orders bled into Tuesday and it'd be nice to be able to throw, uh, more people at the problem. Now that we have more people on the team, we can set up a second packing station and go. We just don't have the space for it. So Hopefully we'll get that figured out in the next few months uh, because I think those kind of days are going to become more and more frequent. So my apologies in the short term, if you place an order on say Friday or Monday and it takes an extra day than usual, uh, we're going to do our best to try to mitigate that with whatever we can. Uh, but hopefully we'll, that won't be a problem in a few months at all. Um, and then the, the, Final thing I want to talk about before I jump into pre-orders and restocks and Q&A and all that good stuff is uh, we posted up a vlog on Tuesday kind of covering the whole virtue thing, right? The receiving them through packing them, sending them all out. I think it's a good watch. I think all of our vlogs are a good watch. And if you enjoy watching these weekly updates, I think you'll even more enjoy watching the vlogs. I think more people should should take the time to watch them because there's a lot of behind the scenes stuff that goes on. I think there's, it's really interesting and definitely the, the most recent one, I feel like watching it to review it, it's like watching like reality TV, uh, but not the, the cheesy bad kind where there's all sorts of fake drama, but like real real television, it's, it's kind of cool. Uh, so anyway, moving on to uh, pre-orders. We got a handful of pre-orders up on the site this week. A bunch of Kotobukiya stuff primarily uh, MSG, model support goods. These are uh, tools and, or not even tools, but like accessories, weapons, and so these are like weapons, accessories, parts, things like that that you can use to customize your kits. Uh, there are a handful of those in this set of pre-orders. MSG Heavy Weapon Unit 06, Exceed Binder, MSG Heavy Weapon Unit 12, Gun Blade Lance, uh, MSG Mecha Supply 17 Expansion Armor Type D, MSG Mecha Supply Radiate Fin, and uh, MSG Weapon Unit 36 Missile and Radome. So some of these look really cool. Missile and Radome looks like it'd be a cool weapon set for like a heavy, heavy kind of build. I think the Expansion Armor is the one kind of almost looks like Fin Funnels, like a new Gundam type setup if you wanted to kind of make your own new Gundam type uh, type look and some of these weapons look cool too 
the uh, the one other pre-order is actually already sold out. We po usually we post our pre-orders up on like Tuesday or Wednesday of the week, just to kind of do it opposite of when we do the restocks. And the other one was the Frame Arms Girl and Ascentia Racer and Nosaru Racing Specs version. Another Frame Arms Girl design, and uh, it looks pretty cool. Colors are cool on it. The, the black and green thing is kind of cool, but they sold out super fast because we weren't able to get very many. Our supplier limited us quite a bit on what they're going to send us. We will have some available on our restock day when they come in, uh, but I'll mention those there just to remind people that you might want to subscribe to our email list because then you'll get notified of these pre-orders when they go up immediately, or even better yet, be on the Discord and you'll know the second they're posted. Uh, moving on though, restocks. Restocks this week uh, are pretty solid in my opinion. Not quite as crazy as the past couple weeks, but some good stuff nonetheless. Definitely stuff worth taking a look at. We got restocks on a majority of the Gun and Breaker Battle Log stuff this week. Uh, and most of this we've had in stock. A few of these were back in stock after having sold out recently. Uh, but they're all good kits and worth looking at anyway. So there's the... Uh, Gundam Ground type, uh, Urban Combat type. Gundam, Gundam Ground, Urban Combat type. There we go. Got a recolor of the Gundam Ground type. Goof Crimson Custom. So basically, the uh, Goof Custom, but in red. Barbatoros, which is the Gundam Barbatos with uh, four legs and some other cool stuff. That was, was a really cool one, pretty popular one. I think that one was sold out, or was really close to it if it wasn't sold out. Gundam Command Quant was the same, same boat, either sold out or really close to selling out. So glad to have those back in stock. Those have been really popular. Gundam Live Lance Heaven. So this is basically a Death Scythe, but in white, primarily. And then the Blazing Gundam, which I think is very much, you know, a Shining Gundam, but recolored different. And I think there's a few other features that are different on it, too. We also got two kits from... Uh, what were at the borderline AMAM -AM kits. We got the Miles Riki. Uh, so this one just came in. This one was pre-ordered a while ago. I don't think we got a ton of those, so I wouldn't wait too long. And we also got the Shishibe Shion. Say that five times fast. Uh, figure Eyes standard kit, I think. Yeah, Figure Eyes standard kit. One of the characters from that show. I'm not familiar with her or the, the show all that much to know what else is going on there. Two other UC kits that might be of interest. We just got these HG Zaku 2 FZ. So if you're a War in the Pocket fan, this is a cool version of the Zaku. And the one that I think is going to be probably the fastest seller of the, the restock, the uh, Zaku, the Ground War set HG Hard Graph. These are 2009, I think. The thing that's most interesting about this isn't the Zaku, but all the stuff that comes with it. There's a ton of like tanks and those little like, I don't know what you call them. They're like bikes almost. Hover bike kind of things. Little soldiers, weapons, accessories, but the tanks are definitely the coolest. And this 2009, so it shouldn't be, shouldn't be horrible in terms of the, the high grade kit itself. <clears throat> but it's, it's old enough and hard enough for we, we're trying to even find pictures for the listing right now because Bandai Hobby doesn't have any of that stuff up on their site for some reason. We have two other kits in with the restock this week, both uh, from Trumpeter, our first kits from Trumpeter. These are Transformers, Bumblebee, and Blitzwing. And uh, so these are, I believe, does designs based on the Bumblebee movie. Uh, kind of interesting designs if you're into Transformers, might be worth checking out. I think these are technically reprints, but they're the first time we've had them. Uh, finally, we also restocked God Hand. Tons of God Hand stuff. So I'm only going to show a few things because I would just be here showing you stuff forever. Ultimate Nippers, I think have been in stock, but we got more of those. And then the normal nippers, which I hear are, are really solid nippers. Very inexpensive, good utility. I'm going to cut things I shouldn't cut with my expensive nippers kind of nippers. Uh, and Delpy Decal. And I don't know... I guess I'll hold up these ones because you can actually kind of see the, the artwork. But huge Delpy decal restock. Decal restocks are always uh, kind of busy, popular days for us. So if you're looking for decals or uh, detail parts and accessories, now's a great time to jump on that and, and get your, your stock for those. 
So that's it for restocks this week. Let's move on to Q&A. So Q&A is a part where I answer questions from you, the viewer. If you have a question you want answered, post it down in the comments below, and I'll try to answer it next week. And uh, first one is from Gumplespade00. Great answer. Question of the week. Would you ever sponsor someone to review kits on behalf of Mecca Warehouse? So the answer to this is, is yes, but no. So we already have sponsored builders. We have a handful. We're not really looking to add any to like the official sponsored stable, so to speak. Uh, and I'm not sure how important it is to have them review kits. There are so many places, so many people out there reviewing kits right now that uh, there's plenty of places to get that, that feedback. So I don't know that that adds too much value to the, the ecosystem in general, but so, but short answer, we, we would if it was the right situation, I guess. Uh, next question, MWG. Heavy arms with rotating gatlings would be worthy of MGX title. My question, what would be your lineup of a three or five unit team of Mecca? Doesn't have to be all from Gundam Universe. It's a great question. I think if I were gonna, like, it really depends on the purpose and what, what you're doing it for. If I'm doing it just to have like an aesthetically pleasing, like cohesive unit of Mecha, I'd probably be almost all GM types probably, just cause I think you can find enough variation in that set and you'd have like a, a GM sniper cause you need that long range sniper type, probably um, like a full armor version, like one of the, I think there's a full armor GM in one of the, the series or manga or something, basically like the full armor Gundam, but a gym. That would be pretty cool as like a tank kind of close in, protect the others kind. You'd probably want a, just a heavy weapon barrage type. Um, I'm not sure if there is a gym that, that meets that, that qualification. It must be like a gym cannon or something that would, would meet that kind of spec. So something, something along those lines. Uh, otherwise, I think if you're going to go five unit team of Mecha, you just go with the Gundam wing team because they kind of cover all your bases. <laughs> <laughs> All right, moving on. Plastic germs. Question, what is the average time or how long does it take to do an order from picking it to packing it and finally placing it on the ready to ship pile? It's a great question. It's hard to know what that exact amount of time is because we don't do one order at a time very often. Generally, we pick a batch of orders, usually 10 to 20. Then we uh, stage all those orders and get them all lined up on the cart. And then we pack all those orders. Our expectation time-wise is if a single individual is picking and packing and doing all of the stuff, it should take them, you know, they should be able to do about 10 orders an hour, give or take, depending on the complexity of the orders. And if somebody else is picking for them, then 15 to 20, again, depending on the complexity of the orders. Uh, so assuming one person's doing it, we can use that to estimate. If you can do 10 an hour, that should take about six minutes per order give or take, and uh, but I think it might take slightly longer than that if someone were to do it end to end on one order, because usually when you're doing a bunch of orders, you have the efficiency of not having to run everywhere in the warehouse for every order, and it saves a lot of, a lot of time and walking. Uh, excellent question though. And then he also asked fun question, personally, would you consider the Tesla Cybertruck a truck? And I'd say yes, because if it's designed to be a truck and they're calling it a truck, it's a truck, because what's a truck anyway, right? To get super philosophical on you. I don't know how you define what a truck is. Like there, there must be a definition for what a truck is, but to me, like a pickup truck, the only thing that really differentiates it from a car is the intended purpose and maybe how structurally it's built a little bit. Trucks tend to be cab on frame instead of the unibody design that most cars are these days. But other than that, I mean, what, what is a truck? So answer me that. Okay, next question, uh, Nike629. Questions, if you could decide what the next few RGs would be, which ones would it be? And then what few MGs do you think are due for 2.0 slash updated release? So RGs, uh, if I could decide, uh, one, I wouldn't have made the Gao Gaigar, which is the one that just got announced the next RG. That's just me, and that's mostly selfish because I don't think we'll sell as many as other things. But if you think you'll buy one, let us know, and we'll have the full uh, news in the, uh, the next weekly, not the next weekly update, but next week we should be doing a kind of update video on all the new announcements that were made. Uh, I'd probably do a real great Epion would be on my short list. I think that one would sell incredibly well. I think it'd be really popular. Um, I feel like there should be 
maybe some sort of RG Jesta or Jim or something. There's not a whole lot of RGs that are grunt suits though, so I don't know that they would. And uh, hmm. I think those would be the, the two main ones. And I think they're probably ready to do like a 2.0 RG on like a Zaku or, or RX-78 because those are early RGs and suffer from all the early RG issues. As far as MGs that are due for 2.0 or updated release, the only ones that come to mind immediately that I've, I've built in the last few years would be uh, a couple of the early wing master grades could really use a, a refresh. Most of them are pretty solid. Uh, I think like the Wing Zero Custom already got the Verka, which is essentially a 2.0. I'd love to see them roll that same, those same kind of improvements into the regular wing design because I think it would be, would be great. Uh, I think most of the other ones are pretty solid though. And the, the one I've heard people mention, I think, are a lot of the, uh, the G Gundam Master Grades are a little bit on the older side. I don't think they've done any new G Gundam Master Grades in a while. And I think those could use an update. Uh, but I haven't built those, so it's hard to say from first-hand experience. And then one last question, Artie Deand, do you have heat and AC in the warehouse? Great question. We do have heat. That's uh, usually when I'm cursing under my breath because I'm being interrupted is because the heat's kicking on because it's very loud in here. It makes all the office stuff here in the back very difficult to communicate uh, with anybody when, uh, when the heat's on. We do not have AC though, so the summer kind of sucks. It gets a little warm in here. So sorry to break that news to you now, Patrick. Uh, it definitely gets a little warm. We've got a big, big fan that does pretty good on those really hot days, but it, it actually stays fairly cool in here unless it's one of those like 95 degree days outside. And uh, as long as it's not hot like that consistently, I think we had like a week, week or two uh, this past summer that were, were kind of like that. The fan took the edge off and we all survived. Uh, but usually it doesn't, doesn't heat up very easily. It seems like it, uh, it gets cold in here easier than it gets hot. And that's it for questions. So if you have a question you'd like answered, post it down in the comments below and I'll do my best to answer it next week. Thank you for watching and see you next time.